House Republicans are now considering a short-term measure to keep their Homeland Security Department functioning. Republican sources tell the NewsHour the temporary bill could fund the agency for three weeks. Otherwise, it runs out of money tomorrow night. Until now, the House GOP has been demanding a funding bill that rolls back the president's immigration policy. Senate Democrats repeatedly blocked it. Their leader, Harry Reid, stuck by that today. If they send over a bill with all the writers in it, they've shut down the government. We are not going to play games. We've been working for a month to come up with a clear funding proposal the president can sign. So they can, they can put all the writers on it they want. We will not allow that to take place. Senate Republican leaders have now agreed to go ahead with a long-term funding bill without the immigration language. But House Speaker John Boehner would, not st would still not say today if that's acceptable. It is not a fight amongst Republicans. All Republicans agree that uh, we want to fund the Department of Homeland Security and we want to stop the president's executive actions uh, with regard to immigration. So we're waiting to see what uh, the Senate can or can't do, and, uh, and then we'll make decisions about how we're going to proceed. Unless something is signed into law by the weekend, 30,000 Homeland Security employees will be furloughed. Another 200,000 will have to work for a time without pay. A sweeping regulatory shakeup is coming to the Internet to ensure net neutrality, the idea that no one has favored or faster access than anyone else. The Federal Communications Commission voted three to two today for a new rule. It says Comcast, Verizon, and other service providers must act in the, quote, public interest. They are barred from slowing or blocking web traffic or creating special for-pay fast lanes. The broadband industry vowed to challenge the rule in court. Russia has now become the leading cyber threat to U.S. national security. The director of national intelligence, James Clapper, said as much to Congress today. It's part of an annual assessment, but this year Russia displaced China as the lead threat. Clapper offered no explanation. In Syria, the number of Christians abducted by Islamic State forces this week has risen to at least 220. That is according to a report today by Syrian activists. Meanwhile, in Iraq, a new Islamic State video showed militants smashing ancient artifacts at a museum in Mosul. They declared the objects were unholy idols. Some were nearly 3,000 years old. The death toll from avalanches in northeastern Afghanistan rose to at least 186 today. Funerals were held for many of the victims in the Panjshir Valley, 60 miles from Kabul. Relatives hand-carried the bodies through deep snow. The snow was too strong and so heavy. I have never seen such a heavy snow in my 60-year life. It was too strong. We could not even reach out to our neighbors for several hours. Officials say the death toll could go higher once crews reach the hardest hit areas. A judge in Argentina has dismissed allegations that President Cristina Fernandez covered up Iranian involvement in a 1994 bombing. The attack killed 85 people at a Jewish community center. A prosecutor filed the complaint before he died under mysterious circumstances. But the judge ruled today there is no evidence implicating Fernandez. Back in this country, a federal jury in New York convicted a Saudi Arabian man today in the 1998 bombings of two U.S. embassies. Prosecutors said Khalid al-Fawaz was an early leader of al-Qaeda. The bombings in Kenya and Tanzania killed 224 people. The Senate Judiciary Committee approved the nomination of Loretta Lynch today to be Attorney General of the United States. Three Republicans joined committee Democrats in the 12 to 8 vote. If the full Senate confirms her, Lynch will be the first African-American woman to serve as Attorney General. Running back Adrian Peterson has been cleared for a reinstatement to the Minnesota Vikings. The National Football League had suspended him through mid-April over a child abuse case. Today, a federal judge found the league punished him under a policy that was not yet in force when he was charged with the crime. The NFL said it will appeal. And on Wall Street, a fresh drop in oil prices hurt energy stocks. That sent the Dow Jones Industrial Average down 10 points, but it is still above 18,200. The Nasdaq rose 20 points and the S&P 500 slipped three.